Second aspect of asana as mentioned in, uh, by Maharshi Patanjali in the Yoga Sutra is called Prayatna Shaitilya. Prayatna Shaitilya Ananta Samapatti Bhyam. These are the two uh, things to be looked at. These are the two sutras about asana. Let us look at Prayatna Shaitilya. So, what sutra says that posture is perfected, made steady and comfortable through relaxing the effort and in awareness with the endless or with the endlessness. So, there are two things. Uh, asana is perfected when it is uh, made steady and comfortable through relaxing the effort. When in holding asana, we need not to make effort. That is prayatna shaitil. So, that is the state we need to reach while practicing asana. And second thing is ananda samapatti that we are going to discuss in the next, uh, next slide. Prayatna shaitil is a relaxation of all efforts. Only by such relaxation can one obtain genuine stillness of the mind body. When we achieve that stability and comfort, prana flow freely in those parts of the body. Actually, prana does not flow where there is muscle tension. So, refinement of asana is about releasing any tension there in the body. When total relaxation take place, we need not to make effort. So, asanas have to be practiced to that extent or we can say that we have perfected a particular asana, where we can be in that posture with the fully comfortable and relaxed situation. Some very interesting experiments were conducted by uh, Professor Gata uh, Fadke uh, in Pune and uh, uh, Dr. Sanjay Fadke and their team. They looked at the practice of the uh, novice yoga practitioner and a senior yoga practitioner while they are performing asanas. They saw that the senior yoga practitioners have much better uh, heart rate variability uh, that is the indicator of the uh, health of the nervous system, health of heart and um, overall health indicator. They also noticed that the, the senior practitioners even performing seemingly difficult and complicated posture remain totally relaxed and that is the uh, a reflection of a definition of yoga given in Bhagavad Gita, which is called Samatvam Yoga Uchyate. Equanimity is yoga. Yoga practice, asana practice bring equanity by externally performing the different difficult posture, but internally remaining calm and steady and in this process we naturally become comfortable. One extreme example is of Swami Veda Bharati. Swami Veda Bharati uh, was giving a lecture on uh, uh, biological feedback and uh, he allowed one uh, US doctor to fix EMG, electromyograph to the uh, few parts of his body in the neck, in the, uh, in the leg and in the hands. This instrument measures the stress in the muscular system. After some time, after observing these readings of the EMG, doctor started chuckling and this uh, uh, incidence is mentioned in the uh, Stephen Parker's book. 
naturally uh, Swami Vedabharati asked the doctor and others also got curious who were present in the session why doctor is chuckling, why what he found so amusing. He mentioned, he told that the Swami Vedabharati's EMG reading are reflecting utter relaxed situation of the muscles. This relaxed situation is generally this kind of reading is generally found in the corpse on the dead bodies. But here was Swami Vedabharati, he was standing, he was making postures, he was explaining things, he was actually delivering a lecture. Even while delivering a lecture, standing and using mic and using board and writing on that, he was not having almost any stress uh, on his muscles. It is difficult to explain these things just by looking at the physiological aspect, because by the physiological calculations with that kind of relaxation, he should not be standing what to talk about delivering a lecture, but he was a standing. So, this aspect uh, is explained by uh, the masters by using the notion of prana. We are going to have more discussion on prana in the next session, but is inherently it says that uh, when there are tension in the muscles, the pranic flow, the vital energies flow in those portion is restricted when it is relaxed, the, the pranic flow is unobstructed and when the pranic flow is unobstructed, the pranic energy itself provides the energy to the physical body to perform the action. In the yogic state, people do not make actions with the physical energy, they perform actions with the pranic energy. I know this may sound little esoteric and uh, there are, uh, there is a great scope to research and explain these things and understand these things empirically with the existing instruments, but notion of prana is very important in yoga. Pranamaya kosh is in, uh, is inescapable aspect of human self uh, recognized in all yogic traditions, but what it is suggesting is that asanas are the ways to release tension in different parts of the body, so that prana can flow in those parts easily. As a result of that, without much use of physical energy, we can perform our actions. So, that is the indicator of the prayatna shaitilya. Another aspect is Anantya Samapatti. Ananta Samapatti is a coalescence with the Ananta, endless or endlessness. This is related to the endlessness such that as space and reaches uninterrupted identification, then the ahankar, the body configuration ceasing and postures no longer cause discomfort. Ananta Samapatti meaning being identified with endless or endlessness. How we achieve that? We achieve that by giving attention to different layers of self. So, while performing asana, a novice has to give much more attention in comparison to a, a senior practitioner they have to give more attention to the physical body. However, as the practice grows, we start giving attention to breath, then we start giving attention to the emotions, then we start getting attention to the thoughts and we become witness to our self while in that in series of asanas. Because of this uh, expansion of the identification. First, our identification is with our body, the larger identification is with our thoughts, emotions, prana. We develop a sense of witness and that 
process actually expands our me map. We become more aware of our surrounding. We know that there are many studies and I have quoted in the earlier studies, uh, the studies and research conducted by our own team, which has seen that egocentric bias come down with the practice of yoga. So, our uh, egocentric bias, our me map actually uh, increases, we become more inclusive. Actually the distinction between body and which is microcosm and the macrocosm is start reducing. So, our identity with this limited body is loosened and we start identifying with the larger system and that is the reality. Because we might identify ourselves as body, we might connect our individuality, our personality limited to this body, but the fact of the matter is that with this body is, is constantly in interaction with the environment. We are constantly exchanging oxygen, carbon dioxide, we are constantly exchanging water, we are constantly exchanging food, environment that is why keep affecting us, we keep in influencing the environment, this, this is a constant interaction process. So, uh, our self is not actually limited to the body, our self is much expanded. When this becomes our experience when this understanding goes beyond cognition and reaches to the level of experience and when this keep increasing, it reaches to the level where we identify with the cosmos. Those movements may be very few while practicing yoga or mindfulness, but they bring deep sense of calmness and that result into a different order of metacognition. Why this is factual according to Maharshi Patanjali? That he explains in the fourth chapter of his book, uh, Yoga Sutra, where he says, Pravritti bhede prayojakam chittam ekam anekesham, chitta mind may look multiple, but inherently the mind or consciousness is one. This mind or consciousness is one that looks different in different bodies and that sense of difference is because of my identification which is limited to my body and my thoughts and my emotions. But reality is that what I call I is infinite because there is one existence manifested in different forms. This is one consciousness or one chitta, that is what Maharshi Patanjali say, is captured because of ignorance in different forms and through the practice of asanas, we can have a glimpse of that infiniteness, because we become aligned our system become aligned, our egocentric bias come down because of metacognition, because of mindfulness, because of awareness, because of uh, alignment in the body which result into free flow of prana. So, uh, that is the ideal of performing asana, prayatna shaithil and ananta samapati. Asana is said to be, can be considered to be perfected when we are in this asana without any effort, that is prayatna shaithil. And it is, it can be said to be perfected when we experience the limitlessness of myself. Myself with the small s merge into self with the capital S if we use the term of uh, Professor S. K. Chakravarti, who did phenomenal work in the field of spirituality and management.